Hello, I'm Colleen Gurgley, and this is my husband, Chris, and we've been blessed with eight beautiful children. We enjoyed every, every moment of our married life together, right? Every second. <laughs> Joyful family is a gift from God. Um, we are called to have relationship with God and relationship with each other. You see relationships every minute of every day, and it's never really what you expect it to be. Each child brings to our family more love, and um, so this family is definitely a gift from God. Um, you know, in heaven, obviously, there's so much joy. And when you're living every day for the glory of God, um, you are mirroring that heaven. Every sibling is brings so much joy to the table. And when you look at every sibling, you're filled with joy. And so, um, yeah, definitely family is a little piece of heaven. And it is like entering into a whole different environment. It's like it is like entering into a piece of heaven. Heaven, all the good things that family life provides will be a foretaste of what heaven. Like I said, there's a lot of self-sacrificing that goes on in a big family, but everyone in that family benefits from it. And it teaches you to love unconditionally. Even if there's noise, chaos, crying, arguing, whatever's going on, dogs barking and doing whatever, it's so much better than the experience out there that uh, it, is, it is a piece of heaven. Well, Chris and I, um, we actually met on Ave Maria Single Catholics online um, back in the early 2000s. And we were both looking to marry um, a person who was strong in the faith strong in their Catholic faith. Somehow I saw Colleen's profile and we started to talk uh, or communicate through Ave Maria. And that then led to emails and that led to phone calls. And this was about a year process that this was going on. Then Chris came to my hometown and we met in person. And then within about 20 minutes, he asked me to be his wife. Um, and I said, yes. Um, because we had spent so much time communicating and talking about all the major issues um, that we were fairly certain that we were called to be married to one another. As I was communicating more and more with this person um, on the phone and, and we're getting, and just, she was so, it was just such a wonderful experience. I, I just longed, I just, I, every day I just was looking forward to talking to her more and more. So when we met and then we, it, <sighs> It was just so complete. Chris was 35 and I was 24 when we met. So there was a little bit of an age gap there, but um, Chris was in a good place in his career to be looking to get married and I was um, ready to get married as well. I felt like it was a good time in my life. And we both felt that God was calling us to the sacrament of marriage. Chris's best quality has to be his optimism. He always sees the glass half full. And his optimism will help me on my darker days to um, see the sun again and to know that um, everything's gonna be okay because we are in God's hands. And so Chris has uh, an incredible ability to be optimistic and to trust. He trusts um, completely that God is in charge and he helps me when things get really tough to continue to trust in, in that same way. Charity, without question, her, her charity and her fortitude 
her, uh, it, it's definitely a combination. She is absolutely courageous. She's far more courageous than I am. I mean, she would, you know, if she was going to have to take care of her child, um, yeah, a group of soldiers couldn't stop. Rose is our oldest, and she's 19. And Rose is a great leader. She works very hard at all of her uh, endeavors. It seems like anything that Rose uh, wants to achieve, she does. And she has a great love for Jesus in the Eucharist. We call her the Rose. <laughs> Rita is our next daughter, and Rita is 17, and she has a very big heart. She is also very involved with um, her schoolwork, and she loves to run. So she's a runner, and she's very dedicated to her sport, and she's, um, she's very loyal. So Rita's very loyal to our family. Maria is 15 and she's the third daughter. Uh, Maria is outstanding with young children. Is she has patience like no other. Treasure our Maria, our super snuggler. Remember, oh, she used to, yeah. when she was a baby, she was a as a little child. She she snuggled. She was the snuggler, don't you think? Yes, she was. Yeah. Mary Claire is our next child, our fourth child, and she's 12 years of age, and she is a, a gentle spirit. I mean, she just always has a baby in her arms. She always has. She has always um, been extremely helpful to me as like a next mother down. She has always helped me with littler kids, and she has an ability to be a leader to them and to um, show them how to stay organized and to get things accomplished in the house. So she's very good at delegating tasks to them and, and getting them to um, clean up areas and things like that. So it's been, Mary Claire's a, a great helper to her mom. Gemma is our fifth child and she is 10. She's our champion, uh, Gem. It's like you need to have something done. Gemma is there. She's yeah. right. I mean, she's boom, and she'll help you, and she'll give you 110%. Christopher, seven going on 16? Yeah, probably. <laughs> throws a football, throws a hardball, um, rides his bike like crazy man. Uh, loves the Tigers, the Detroit Tigers. Uh, loves the Detroit Lions. His great highlight was uh, receiving uh, First Communion uh, and having confirmation. Uh, he was, I was so proud of the way he handled himself as a young man. He was probably one of the youngest guys there for confirmation. Suit tie on, marched right up there to the bishop. Um, um, really proud of Christopher. The thing for Christopher, every morning he knows, he gets up, he goes, the first thing he does is he comes down and gives his mom a big kiss. <laughs> Juliana. Juju. So Juliana's four, and she's our sixth daughter, the seventh child in our family. And Juliana, um, she has a great sense of humor, and she loves to make people laugh. She loves her little sister, too. She loves Hope. Uh, she's a wonderful big sister. Uh, she gets along with uh, her, her older brother. She's our Juju. She wants to be called Juju. <laughs> is our number eight baby. Um, so hope is a year and a half. Being number eight in a family, uh, you know, I guess you have a lot of people around you and she does. So she's extremely comfortable with other people. You know, and to hold hope is to have hope in your heart.
family is a little preview of heaven because heaven is when we all come together and we're all there, you know, in union, like we're all there. We're all there together with each other and that's what heaven's gonna be like. We're all gonna be together and families like that. You always have somewhere to go and you're so loved in heaven and in a family you're so loved. As a parent, you're being recorded every second in a child's mind, okay? To be a good role model as a father, supporting my wife in that. You know, not only participating, but leading the rosary uh, and, uh, you know, participation and leading uh, prayers when it comes to saying uh, grace over our meals. Going as a family, we always go as a family to Mass. Chris and I try to pray together as a family each day, and we try to uh, frequent the sacraments, and we try to um, we try to have good relationships with each other. Um, so, so focusing again on our relationship with God first and foremost, and then our relationships with each other. My parents always really talk to us about um, the different devotions and novenas in our faith, and they really instilled a love for the saints in us as little kids. And so my mom and dad especially would talk about their love story and how they met, and they would link it to the saints that they prayed to, like St. Therese of Lisieux. And so I always just grew up with this idea that you ask the saints, they're your friends, you know, and you ask them to help you with things. And so I think my sisters and I just naturally felt like, okay, if mom and dad could meet through, you know, saints intercession, we can, we can have wonderful things happen too. We have tried to um, encourage them to learn about different saints, and then we will go visit um, different shrines that honor a particular saint or um, a devotion to Our Lady. And these trips have provided um, not only grace, but incredible memories. I think shrines are incredible, and there's so many of them. And there's something about making that trip as a family to a shrine. I think going to shrines has such a value because um, there, 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 there's just a grace that's associated with that. So we do that. We'll drive distances just to go see um, different Catholic shrines and um, to learn about what that saint offers us as Catholics. And you can see the fruit in your children, and um, they continue to grow in virtues. Um, some of these virtues that the saints have, um, we um, can attain as well. We have a chapel downstairs. We put that into, uh, we, that was, uh, you know, Colleen felt a uh, real strong desire to have a chapel when we were finishing our, our lower level. And it, that made great sense to me. And so we had that drawn into the plans. And that has been a very special experience uh, for the family. So I think maybe carving out a place uh, in your home that's for worship, you know, that's for your, you know, private time with God and that, that all the family members know that. Uh, and you go there together to pray as well. That's very special. It's on my heart to have a home chapel. And would you be willing um, to say yes to this idea that we would put the small chapels, um, a place where we can go as a family to pray together and possibly have a mass? As soon as we did that, um, we, we dedicated the space to Our Lady and everything came together very, very quickly for the whole basement. And it, the whole project went very smoothly. And, um, and we've been blessed. We've been blessed with this, this sacred space in our home where we can come together as a family and we can pray. We can pray the rosary. We've had mass that in our home. And so Jesus has been right here in our basement. And it's been a great gift to all of us and our family. I would say that our family has um, entrusted ourselves to um, Mary, Our Lady. First thing we did when we started a garden was to put the statue of Our Lady of Grace in the garden. Every day we ask her to wrap her mantle around our family for peace, protection, for guidance. Our chapel downstairs is dedicated to Our Lady and to St. Anne. Also, my husband has great devotion to St. Joseph as a protector of the family. I think some of the challenges of you know, just raising children today is that um, our culture is not always encouraging to 
you know, women to stay home and have children. Um, and so you rely upon God for strength and grace to do His will for you. Each day you learn a little bit more and I often look to uh, moms who have a little bit more experience than I do, um, who are a little bit ahead of me. And I ask some questions and I say, how do you do this? And how do you do that? And today with technology, the way it is, you can you know, read stories about moms who have way more children than me. And they have great, um, they have great information for the moms who are just coming up behind them as to how to manage a large household. Family life's not always perfect, and we as human beings are sinners, we make mistakes, but we've tried to be role models in showing forgiveness to one another, and we've tried to instruct our children to do the same. You know, I, th I think as a father, I think it's extremely important uh, that uh, you're there, you're you're in the vehicle, you're driving the vehicle, you're, you're, you're showing your support. Uh, to your wife and to your family of how important this is to you, how real this is to you, uh, how needed it is to you. So uh, again, I think kids, they they sense and understand whether something is authentic or not. And if a dad's not there, it's just not going to seem that authentic to them. And they're not going to understand how important that relationship is for them with Jesus Christ. So they've been really inspirational to me with their trust in the Lord. They trust Him so much and they're so joyful. And they always are willing to sacrifice themselves for us, which I think is so special. And the love they have for each other and for us is something that taught, is like teaches me how to love. You know, they taught me how to love. My parents really inspire me with their prayer life. They always made time every single day, no matter what. It can be a crazy head to day and they take time you know, 30 minutes, an hour, even 10 minutes to sit down with the family and pray. And that's always been a huge priority and it really, really inspires me. Sure, so as a little kid, I would always hear stories about different saints or different people who would just slip a little like note under a statue and, you know, write a little special prayer intention. And so I remember as a kid, um, just I would, I would like write for any like intention, like for instance, I wanted a dog super bad, so I wrote for a dog, and I would just slip it under the saint. And a lot of times, my it, the prayer would come true, and it would be amazing to watch. And then you could go back and take that little nod of the statue and see how your prayer came true, and it was so cool. My mom and dad are both very good at expressing their love for us, and they express their love for us in different ways. My dad is someone who really expresses his love through words of affirmation. And growing up, he never ceased to just tell me how beautiful I am, how loved I am, um, the fact that I'm a daughter of God. He's instilled so much confidence in all of his children. And my mom really expresses her love through um, acts of service. She's someone who pours herself out every single day um, in the kitchen cooking meals for us, um, cleaning for us. If we're sick, she'll be there, um, you know, making sure we're okay, giving us our medicine. And so just watching them express their love in different ways, but equally so, I think has been the biggest role model and like the biggest, the thing I aspire to the most, so. Spending time with, sp uh, the lack of time, the spending time with the kids, right? And the tr trying to do that. Um, and boy, that that's probably one of the that's one of the biggest challenge, to try to have time with them. Um, because, you know, you, you really you really need to do that. And um, so... Uh, but you take them to adoration with you? Sometimes? Well, the older kids... Oh, well, actually, I took them all. Took, yeah, you're right. We've, yeah. we, all of the kids have gone to adoration. That's a wonderful You're experience with, with me. Yeah. So I started driving and my dad usually drives with me and it's really cool to spend a lot of time with him because sometimes we don't get as much like one-on-one -on -one time because of his work and then he comes home, it's family time. And so just to be able to go out of the house and just like talk to my dad, it's really cool because um, I get to learn so much about him because my dad is a big storyteller and so he always tells stories when he drives, which is like really nice. Because it's like kind of takes your mind off the pressure of driving sometimes when you're new. And then it's also a time where I get to know more about my dad, which is fun. We've tried to build our house uh, on the rock uh, versus the sand. We definitely are building our family on um, 
on the rock of Christ and we're using the church as our guide. There's only one way to do it, getting on your knees. It, you, you just have to you just have to, to get on your knees and you have to, to uh, have humility and you have to, to pray and you have to, that's that's there's just no side no sidestepping that. It has to be um, perseverance, spiritual perseverance. I suppose that's my answer. Uh, spiritual perseverance that you uh, there's just this this you can never I mean God's plan for you is so much greater than you realize um, so love God with your whole heart and then love each other um, you know love your neighbor as yourself and so in a family that also um, looks like a lot of forgiveness and a lot of mercy because um, families are not perfect, and we need the sacraments to become holier, and we need to rely upon each other in forgiveness and mercy in order to continue down our path. And our path and our goal is heaven. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Um, and, and stay within the day. Uh, God provides. God provides. Chris and I first got married. We talked about just being open to God's will and not saying a number because each family is so unique and so different and God wills something different for each family, for each couple. So Chris and I just tried to embrace the idea that we would be open to His will. I just really encourage people to be open to God's will whatever that looks like, and to embrace it and to um, embrace the struggles that come with His will for you because those are the crosses that will lead us to heaven. And you will not regret being open to God's will. You will not regret that, uh, and God will provide for you. So be not afraid and enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. are the Gurgly family. And, and we, we are Joyfully Faye! Problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.